Hello. Hello and good morning. Nice to see you. It's Keith from IELTS Speaking Success. Um, really pleased to see you. Um, today, we're going to be looking at public places, as you can see up here. So we're going to be looking again at some part two questions, kind of new cue cards um, on public places and public transport. So describe a new public building in your city and also talk about or describe da, 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 a trip you made by public transport. That's what we're going to be looking at today. Fantastic. And for those of you who are coming in on demand, welcome to the recording. For those of you who are live, good morning. Very pleased to see you. Who is first in the house? Joey from Facebook. Well, well done. Abilasha, second place. The silver medal today. <laughs> Pimpra, hello and welcome. And Rimpa, Malika, Mampret, Sasireka. Great to see you. Ali from Facebook. Nice to see you here. Sanveen, Sanaz and Ahmed. Mohammed from Facebook. Great. Good to see the Facebook guys here as well as the YouTube guys. Good morning to all of you. Um, Kaustab is here. Emmy is here. Devraj. Great. Ravina. Nice to see you. Sana. Hello. Long time no see. Good to see you here. Nicole as well. Welcome. Nice to see you. And Shakun. Cool. Surya. Welcome, guys. So as I said, today we are going to be looking at public places okay uh, we're going to look at part two cue cards on tuesday we looked at fluency and i really enjoyed looking at the ideas you shared on facebook about how you're improving your fluency and practicing some great ideas people were talking also about practicing with their children so that they can encourage their children to speak english as well as practicing themselves i mean that was fantastic so some really nice ideas. And I think it's lovely, you know, we're sharing with each other. So it's great. Um, so good to see all of you. That's it. Now, let me just um, pull in my notes, as always. <laughs> today, I'm, um, I've changed my drink today. I've, I've actually changed my cup, right? I've gone from the sophistication of um, Disney's princesses to the sophistication of Cambridge College, although not that sophisticated, right? Cambridge College, <laughs> they're losing their branding. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Anyway, today, you're not going to guess what I'm drinking. There's no way you'll guess what I'm drinking. Um, go on, have a guess. Those of you who've come in Tanja from Germany, nice. Maritu Rajas, thank you very much for coming in today and thank you for your donation. Oh, and by the way, whilst not, or before I forget, a big thank you to those who have donated, including uh, Ritu Rajas. Thank you very much. Um, and Beverly and Jacqueline Gomez, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So what am I drinking? Let's see what you've got. Coffee? No. Hot water? No. Tea? No. Green tea, no. Cup, chocolate. Chocolate, <laughs> if only. Red dates, not today. Ginger tea, not today. Hello, uncle. Oh, hello, nephew. Hello, niece. <laughs> That's great, right? I love it because in I remember when I was living in China, the Chinese um, always call the elderly, the older person, uncle, right? Even if they're not part of the family. Hello, uncle. And at first I was very surprised. I thought, hang on, I don't know you. I'm not your uncle, but it's just a way of talking, right? In, in England, we don't do that so much, but I love it. I think it's really nice. It's not milk. It's not black tea, not ginger tea, not lemon tea. No, you're not going to get it because it's too simple. It's too simple. Coca-Cola, come on. Kachidi Coca-Cola this time of the morning? Certainly not. I've actually not drunk Coca-Cola for three years. I gave it up three years ago. Oh, it's just so bad for you. It really is. Rimpa, you're the closest, okay? It's good old-fashioned tap water. So it's not warm, kind of lukewarm. It's just room temperature tap water. Why not? Have a change. 
<laughs> the reason is I didn't have time <clears throat> to prepare my tea, but maybe I'll get that later. <clears throat> Excellent. So <laughs> tap water. Yes, good old fashioned tap water. It's a nice expression, right? Good old fashioned tap water. Some things that were very simple. We just say good old fashioned um, bread, good old fashioned tap water. Brilliant. OK, great. What is the ingredient? <laughs> it's water. <laughs> um, seven up. Oh, don't drink seven up. It's so bad for you. <laughs> really is now then let's have a look so um as we go in here first of all oh yes just to remind you so for those of you um who have bought the udemy course my online course IELTS speaking success get a band seven plus just to let you know the new videos are up so for the may to august um videos questions i've updated um, a few there and uh, on things like risk, uh, road trips, staying up late, those kind of things. Um, and you can go and access them. If you haven't bought the course yet, <laughs> what are you waiting for? No, I mean, I don't know. The course is there. Um, I will share the link with you. You can go and have a look. Um, in fact, I'm going to show you very briefly, whilst I get the link, let me show you the course just so you know what's in there it might help you decide if it's right for you let me just show you this just one moment line course IELTS speaking success get a band seven plus um, there are five sections the introduction as you can see here um, just gives you a welcome there's a new video here about how to use this course explaining the best way to study and follow the course you get resources here, so there are downloadable PDFs as well in some of the different uh, areas. Moving on to part two, um, section two is all about part one, strategies and skills, looking at how to approach the um, speaking uh, exam. We've then got part three, looks at part one model answers. You've got some of the new ones here, shopping, staying up late, tidiness. But lots of these we've had before are still in the bank now. And again, you can get lots of PDFs. So all of the material you see um, inside here, you can actually download into a, a PDF and also watch it as you're doing it. So there are plenty of things to be watching there about part one. And here, uh, the part one question is all about tidiness. <gasps> are you a tidy person? <laughs> I think, are we a tidy person? I don't know. Yes, of, of course. And also part section five looks at part two and part three. Um, there are, again, plenty of new videos up here. And basically you've got model answers, analysis, part three questions for a variety of different topics. Even water sports are favourite, right? And usually you've got, no, you always have the PDFs that you can download. So that's it, just to let you know that's the course enough of that guys um oh my microphone is good um so a couple of you have said that you can't see it that it shows last updated in february and someone yesterday said they couldn't see the new videos um it has it has been updated and it should be working on your browser um you can try a different browser or clear the cache or just refresh your browser it absolutely should work if it's not then you know do let me know um, but if I'm just looking here on the website here it, it is updated here right the new updates May to August so you should be able to to get it but any problems just um, message me and, and let me know okie dokie good some of you tomorrow uh, Bexod have got your IELTS exam how lucky you are that's fantastic um i wish you lots of luck i hope it goes well tomorrow um is the course free no min the course is not free but it's pretty cheap <laughs> i think um for what you get in there oh let me share a link with you then um let me share a link for you to because if you go with the link you get uh, a cheaper price you get the discount um, so let me see if I can share this on my, hmm, hmm. 
I should be able to post messages, right? Yes, theoretically. Hang on, bear with me, guys. I'm just going to put this in into my message and hopefully that should go in right the message should be there let's check <laughs> there's a link there i've just put it through ah, has it gone through hasn't gone through not to worry. I am. Um, if you download the notes, and I'll put it on in YouTube, and you will be able to find it all. Okay. Now then, just bear with me again. Um, I'm going to get into YouTube Live, and I can post it there. So at least the guys in YouTube will be able to see it. I'll post it later on Facebook as well, so you can get that there. There you go. Oh, somebody wants to share their topics. That's always useful to know. Andrea, just wanted to share my topics now speaking. First part was about being a tidy person. Tidiness, that's in the course. Second part to describe a long car trip. Ah, the road trip. That's also in the new course. Right, the, the, the long car trip. Excellent, Andrea. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Um, brilliant. Let's move on. <laughs> now then, I'll get my notes. Let me put up here. So I'll share with you the, the question, the first question. So describing public places. Um, okay, here's the question. This is a part two. Describe a new public building in your city. You should say where it is, what it looks like, what you can do there, and explain how you feel about it. Well, how do you feel about it? So this is quite tricky, right? And a lot of students say, Keith, what on earth is a public building? What does that mean? Is that a government building? Do schools count? Is it a hospital? What exactly is a... Um, public building. Okay, well, before I tell you my idea, um, give me a message, comment, tell me what you think examples of public buildings are. Okay, examples of public buildings. And while you're doing that, Sarabjit, can I speak Punjabi? No. But if you can teach me something, that would be great. <laughs> can you teach us grammar and accent? Yes, I will teach you grammar and accent or pronunciation. Uh, as a part of the classes, we always do a bit of pronunciation and grammar's there all the time. So a gym or a theatre. That's interesting. Public place could be a theatre. I'm going to add all of these to my list. Theatre's good. Library, great. Oh, there's my list that I wasn't going to share with you. But let me change this. And let me bring in your comments. Okay. Library. Great. Gym or theatre. Nice. Uh, Emmy, a park. Mm, it's not a building, is it? The park isn't really a building, so I wouldn't say a park. Museum, yep. Hospital, yep. Metro, yep. yep. Where are you? OMGE Academy. <laughs> metro, yes. I think so long as you're focusing on the building, right? So the metro building rather than the whole system. It, it is a public building. Great. Public library. Nice. Um, shopping malls. Yes, shopping malls definitely can be public buildings. Traditional market. So long as you're focusing on the building. Yep. Good. Kaustab public building can be a museum. Um, right. Buddha. Buddha. <laughs> I thought your name was Buddha quotes. Yes. Taj Mahal in India. Right. So all kinds of temples, 
churches, synagogues, um, whatever it may be. Yes, those can be, um, you know, religious places of worship, can be public places, concert halls, yes. Um, libraries, shopping malls, yeah, good. Got some great ideas. Excellent. All of those, absolutely. Very, very good. Um, I'll just share with you, as you saw, the ones that I had down. Sorry, go kalp. <laughs> Blow you up. You didn't expect that today, did you? Here we go. Um, so, theatres, temples, churches, libraries, post office, right? Sometimes post offices in our city, we have a spectacular post office. The central post office is a beautiful um, ornate public building. Um, I actually really enjoy going there, which is strange, right? Because post offices traditionally were very kind of old, um, slow, boring places. But this new post office is really interesting. I mean, outside, it has these ornate sculptures and it's very kind of oldy worldy, old fashioned. But when you go inside, state of the art technology right? They have displays, they have a shop, a bit like a museum shop, so you can buy things related to stationery, books, CDs. Very clever, right? So they're selling on the one hand, but they're giving this fantastic service. Um, there's an excellent ticketing service, so you don't have to queue for too long. It's very efficient. I mean, yeah, who would have thought, right? Post offices, great. Public schools, right? So schools, not private schools. So if a private school has been built, it's not a public building. But most schools are public buildings. Shopping malls, as you'd said, absolutely. Um, subway buildings, so focus on the building. Hospitals, well, right, nowadays there's been a lot of new hospitals have been built around the world um, to respond to the coronavirus pandemic. And so, in fact, in London, um, they have built a very new state-of-the-art hospital to cater for all of the patients who are coming from the pandemic. Um, again, it's a very modern building. Um, it looks, I've not been in, but it looks fantastic. Um, and it seems to be, you know, really well constructed. So hospitals, business centres, right? So many business centres have public they're public buildings where you can go in, like banks, and do different business transactions. Transport hubs. <laughs> transport hubs. It's a transport centre. So we mentioned the the metro, right? You mentioned the metro, but also your kind of coach, bus station, train station, or the transport hub where they often have trains and buses and taxi services kind of all related there. So those are some things you could talk about. Um, what else? You, some people have got a planetarium. Why not? Public gym. Public, public gym, yes. So not a paid for private gym, no, but a public gym, yes. You have public gyms, Emily. You're very lucky. Government buildings, absolutely, yeah. Somewhere free, and that's the key point. There must be somewhere free. Chinese restaurants <laughs> it's an interesting one um, I'm not so sure about a Chinese restaurant not really restaurants no I mean the shopping mall and the shopping centre yes that's a public building but a restaurant is that a public building hmm not too sure about that subway building great so there are some ideas um, excellent now Oh, let me add court. Somebody's added court. And maybe that's part of the uh, any government building, right? The court house where they do the trials, right? Okay, excellent. So let me tell you, hmm, let me tell you about a public building that has been built um, where I live, right? So I'm going to tell you about what oh yes i remember i'm going to tell you about a bus station that has been built in my city here in santander um oh sorry it's not in santander it was in bilbao which is very very close 
Um, so before they had just some basic bus stops, there was a handful of bus stops where most of the intercity buses would come. So they basically knocked that down and they built up this spanking brand new transport hub. And it's very a very impressive building. Um, overground, above ground, it's a very impressive kind of two-story building where you can go to buy the tickets, get information. And then underground, they've put the platforms um, and it's where you get on and off the buses. So they've made it a state-of-the-art building, right? They have these really, instead of the old-fashioned um, ticket counters where you used to queue for bloody ages. Sorry, don't say bloody in your test. <laughs> that was my anger last time. I used to queue for ages, for absolutely ages. Now um, they have these automatic vending machines. So you can actually just go and buy your ticket. In fact, you can buy your ticket on your phone through the app and then just go and pick it up at the automatic vending machines um so it's lovely and they've made the the kind of the off boarding and the onboarding of the passengers is much more easier is much easier far easier than what it used to be um, and they've got lots of nice facilities they've got a nice cafe a restaurant and some shops to buy the typical convenience things you need when you're traveling or taking a, a short trip um, so it's a really really nice building and I think very very popular and one that I often use because I often travel to other cities uh, nearby so I really enjoy going there uh, it makes me feel safe and comfortable and that is a public building that I love, like, and would like to describe today. <laughs> well, there you have it. Great. There's my public building. Okay. Let's see. Where are you guys? Still got lots of ideas. Brilliant. So talking about public buildings, why? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Barry, <laughs> why don't we use bloody? Because bloody is um, a bit of a swear word. A swear word is a bad word. We often talk about the F word, and I don't mean food. I mean the other F word. Um, it's not, you know, in conversation with friends, I think it's okay. Um, but in the test, I probably wouldn't use it. I don't know. You probably make most examiners smile if you say bloody. Um but you may offend some examiners, especially the older examiners. They may be offended by that. So I would not use it. But, you know, certainly in your conversations, you can. Yeah, it's quite more commonly used nowadays, right? <laughs> OK. Great. Some great expressions. Good. OK. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, mesmerizing. The Taj Mahal is really mes mesmerizing. Great, it's a nice word. It is mesmerizing. I went to the Taj Mahal. It's a beautiful building. Um, very, very, very nice. And of course, what makes it special for many people is the light. Either first thing in the morning or late at night, it has this spectacular reflection of the the walls of the building. Um, and inside this ornate decoration, very, very nice temple. Great. You spoke rack my brains. No, that's not how you spell rack. <laughs> I was teaching this the other day, actually, to somebody to rack your brains. Your speaking racks my brains. Um, to rack is to rack my brains is a great, very good expression, actually. Um, your speaking racks my brains. To rack your brain is to make you think deeply about something. <clears throat> Monica, you must go. <laughs> Brilliant. So, and that is a, a government building or government monuments. Yes. Rack. R-A-C-K. Mm. Eye freezing view. Not really, Niha. Not really. No, I don't think so. I've never, never heard that expression. Right. Let me just go through a few of the things that I said, just to uh, remind you and give you some vocabulary. Um, so I said brand new. Let me make this a little bit bigger just to make it really clear. And let's take Mia out of the picture. 
yeah brand new right um something is very new is brand new and this apparently this comes from the branding if you remember the old cowboys in these american films right the cowboy films and they used to have the cattle or the cows and they have this iron rod they put in the fire and then they go on the side of the animal they brand the animal um showing a kind of ownership and i guess when you put a brand like literally a brand like gucci or armani when you brand something you own it you make it yours so brand new is to put a brand on it is to make it to make it yours so just very new so when we talk about brand new it just means very very new and the same with spanking new i've got no idea where that comes from to spank is to... <laughs> come on how do i explain spank spank is when you have a baby and you go you spank the bottom of a baby um if you're not happy with the baby um i don't know why we say spanking new uh, a complex right is a building so you can talk about a huge complex a huge building or often a group of buildings right um and here was a nice synonym i said a handful of bus stops so instead of saying some or several which is okay um a handful of is literally a handful right um a handful of bus stops it's a nice expression so you can you know you can use this when you talk about people there were three or four people there were a handful of people right there were a handful of bus stops it just means a few maybe maybe five maybe ten but not many right there's a handful of shops in my local street in santa in santander there's a handful of chinese restaurants i think there's about four or five right it's nice instead of some a handful right great um state of the art we talked about which is just very very high tech a transport hub really is a transport center so not just one building but maybe different forms of transport maybe coaches and buses taxis we talked about the onboarding and offboarding of passengers so the where you have the um the platform right and the passengers get on and off then that's the the onboarding and offboarding right the getting on and off it's a nice expression vending machines are very popular nowadays in many public buildings so especially with traveling and buying tickets and these vending machines they have user friendly digital interfaces user friendly nice digital interface so that's just the it's the screen right where you sometimes they're very complex and you can't work out what to press but the ones here are multilingual choose your language very simple user friendly digital interface nice um and the other thing is this one yes let me wind this down a bit far easier okay oh yeah this was just to say when you're talking about because often we say it's much more accessible so much emphasizes something right so you can say it's accessible this is accessible this is more accessible but if the accessibility is a lot it's much more accessible but instead of saying much right like it's much easier you can say it's far easier so in this new transport hub it's much easier to find the bus you're going to take in this transport hub it's far easier to find the bus you're going to take right it's far easier it's just nice it's a change from much right or it's way easier to find the bus you're going to take uh, it's way more convenient right 
Okay, brilliant. <laughs> nice. So a bit of uh, fluency practice, pronunciation practice. Let's do this. Do this with me, right? Far easier. And notice the R. It's very wide. R. Far easier. And can you notice there's a link if I make it clear for you, right? The R comes over here. <laughs> Seriously, reasier, reasier, yeah, reasier, far easier. Can you hear that? Far easier. It's far easier to find the bus you want. Good, but try again with the stress. Dun, 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 dun. Ready? It's far easier to find the bus you want. Nice, good, yeah. Next one. It's way more convenient. Way, it's way more convenient. Nice, full sentence. It's way more convenient to buy tickets. Good. Can you hear the rhythm? It d d d d d d d d. It's way more convenient to buy tickets. One more. It's way more convenient to buy things. It's way more convenient to go shopping. Brilliant. Good. You notice I'm changing one or two words. That's the technique you need to practice to get your flexibility. So when you're repeating with me, yes, repeat. But you also, you shouldn't point, you also can just change one or two words. Build your flexibility, right? Excellent. Good. Nice. Now then, um, I'm just going to share with you a link because I was looking at um, the phrase new. This website, right, phrases.org, is a fantastic website. I love it. Um, I can share this with the guys in YouTube, but I'll also put it in the, sh in the notes. Um, it's really, really good. Hello, come back. Um, phrases.org it's a nice website you can go and have a look at it um, and it gives you a list of things there for it gives you a list of phrases connected with the word you choose so for that one if I wanted to find all the phrases connected with um, new then that's what it shows you um, let me show you A list of phrases related to the word new. Now, it gives you actually also literature references, which is fantastic. Um, it gives you expressions as bright as a new pin, as fresh as a daisy. Um, brand new is probably here as well. I'm sure it is because I found it here. Brand new, the meaning and origin, right? Um, it's got lots of really good stuff. So you can choose any word. I mean... There's, there's too much, right? Literally, look, all of these phrases related to, to new, but a very good resource, one that um, I recommend you have a look at, right? All phrases. Sorry, phrases.org.k. I'll put it in the notes as well. Right. Good. Now, let's come back. Let's see what you're doing. <laughs> right, Emmy, quick question there. What's the meaning of vending machine? So vending Vendre from the French, vender from the Spanish, vende from the Latin is to sell, right? It means to sell. So a machine that sells you something. Um, I think in many countries, like in Japan in particular, vending machines are very, very popular. That You can buy lots of stuff in vending machines, right? Let me show you what a vending machine looks like and you'll get exactly what I mean, Emmy. This is a vending machine, right? Can you see these? 
these machines, da da. So where you go and you um, you can literally go and buy, take me away, go and buy drinks. So you have vending machines in um, in many many shopping malls, but we also have vending machines for tickets, right? To buy tickets in the train station. So there are different kinds of of vending machines. Brilliant. Yeah, nice. Am I on Spotify? No, not yet. Have to wait for my uh, podcast. Maybe in a few months' time when I get some free time. Brilliant. Good. Anything else coming up? Any other questions? Airport. Yes. Yeah, excellent. Good. So um, before I go on to the next question, I have a, a, I have a riddle a riddle for you. Yes. I thought I'll share a riddle with you every day because riddles are very, very interesting. Do you know what riddles are? A riddle is a kind of a quiz or um, a, a puzzle, right? A riddle or a puzzle. So let me share a puzzle with you. Okay. Here we go. I'll put this up here. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Take this one away. A riddle is a puzzle, right? So here's my riddle. Listen carefully. And the first person with the correct answer, I'm going to clap. Well, I haven't even thought about it. But here's the riddle, right? Ready? How many letters are in the alphabet? One more time. How many letters are in the alphabet. <laughs> Different answers. Ooh. 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 <laughs> Ooh. Ah. <laughs> what? Okay. No, nobody's got it right yet. Some very interesting answers here. Um, I can see some of you are almost there. How many letters are there in? The alphabet. You're almost there. How many letters are there in the alphabet? Ah, Fatima, well done. Anybody else? Only one person, only one person. I think a lot of you are kind of halfway there, but you're not quite there. Only Fatima. Let's come back. How many letters are there in the alphabet? That's the right answer. Well done, Fatima. Excellent. <laughs> right. Let me show you and I'll explain why. Let me explain why. Let me just take this away and I'll try and change it. Here we go. Da, da, da. Here's the answer. Fatima, I'm going to take you off for a moment. How many letters are there in the alphabet? 11. The alphabet. Right? A lot of you are thinking alphabet. Eight, right? Very, very good. But almost. But the alphabet. Oh. <laughs> That's today's riddle. I think I will try and do a riddle with you every every class. Keep you on your toes, right? Keep you on your toes. <laughs> Great expression. On your toes. Great. I will keep you on your toes. That means awake and alert. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Cas Hermoso. He says, geez. <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, that's great. Love it. Groove it. <clears throat> yeah. Of course, normally, a lot of you are absolutely right. Normally, in English, there are 26 letters, right? A, B, C, D, E, F. Normally, it's 26. Nice one. Fatima, congrats. Well done. So tricky. Yeah, I've got lots more of those. So I'll do one every um, <laughs> every class with you. Okay, excellent. Let's move on. <clears throat> Let's have a look. Next question. This is another part two question. Let me bring this down. Dum, dum, dum. Where are we? Here we are. Here's the next one. And let me get rid of this. Oi, <laughs> come back. Keep you on your toes. Okay. Oh, try that again. Describe a trip you made by public transport. So we're moving from public places to public transport. Um, you should say where you went, what transport you used, how the trip was, and explain why you chose that form of transport. Okay, trips by public transport. So first question, what do we mean by public transport? What do we mean? Give me some examples of public transport. Oh, yes. <laughs> For Fatima, I forgot to clap. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, okay, good. How many more up my sleeve? I have a lot up my sleeve, cast up. <clears throat> Excellent. Oh. Right, here we are. Let's have a look. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to put you down here. Bundibir. Great bus, great train. Thanks, Dipita. Uh, who else? What else have we got? Uh, Metro, Pimbra. Yep, okay. Metro, which is the underground train. Yep. <clears throat> nice one here from Hassan. The tram. Yep. Intercity tram or the city tram. Good. Uh, ship. Yeah, especially ferries right the ferry i'm going to add that to you gina let me add ferry because ferries in particular are um if i can it's not going to let me is it ship or ferry ferries are um i i guess because where i live we have a ferry that goes from spain to england and the ferry is definitely a public transport right ferries yes um, and especially in some cities where you have canals and they use ferries or boats as taxis. Um, Sydney, they have a lot of boats which are kind of taxis and they take you across the bay or across the water. Um, the ferry boats, we have those here as well. Between north of France and England, there's a lot of ferries going daily. Yep, absolutely. Good. My and plane. Yep, aeroplane. Good. <clears throat> <laughs> Rail, good. Railways is the same. Excellent. Anything else? Nice. We've got another one from Artele. Coaches. Good. Coaches. Uh, anything else? Anything else? I think we've got all of them. Okay. Abilasha. Government transport. Yep. Generally speaking, government transport. Uh, Niraj says bus trains and taxis. So yes, taxis can be seen as public um, public transport. You have to pay, but of course you pay for the bus and everything. So taxis as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a summary from Shakun. Buses, trains, metros, aeroplane. So there are some. Yeah, these are all good. So let's have a look. Um, first of all, I jumped in to Wikipedia <clears throat> to just get a definition, right? So it says that public transport, right? Public transport are travel systems um, available for use by the general public, that's you and me, typically managed on a schedule, so the regular time every day, operating on established routes, so the same route, the same route every day, and that charge a posted fee, like um, a fee that is visible 
that everybody can see for each trip. Now, taxis are a little bit different, but I think they I would include them as public transport. <clears throat> OK, so that's a definition might be quite useful. Um, I would include trains, bus, coach, ferry, taxi and rickshaw, right? Rickshaws as well or tuk-tuks or whatever you call them. I think uh, they have a lot of different names in different countries, right? Um, what would you call them in your country? Do you have these kind of things? Um, rickshaw, rickshaws, tuk-tuks. And for those of you who don't know what that is, <clears throat> because many countries do not have them, let me show you what a rickshaw is. <clears throat> these things, right? We used to have these in Beijing, rickshaws. <clears throat> very hard work, I mean, for some people. Look at this guy, right? Pulling them along. Very, very tough work. But that is a rickshaw. OK, so different things. Now, if you're going to describe a trip in public transport. Oh, you're giving me. Sorry. Yes. Excuse me. What else? you call them? To oh, right. Interesting. Toto. <laughs> Toto. Uh, rickshaw tricycles in the Philippines. Right. Tuk tuk. Lin says we have bike tuk tuk. I've heard that one as well. Um, nice. Niraj. Yeah. Cable cars. Very good. Um, tricycles, any other names you give them? Tok Toks. <laughs> Tok Toks. In Myanmar, we call it, not me, MNN So So calls it sidecar. In Spanish, they call it the city car, I think. Hey, Adna. Hooray. Side point. Adna, thank you. I did the IELTS indicator. 6.5. Lovely. Well done. Nice, Adna. Congratulations. OK, so. Oh, look at this. Khaled, where are you from? Which country do you have? Pekka, Pekka, Kopa, Bawa, Sawa. Or am I just. <laughs> am I misunderstanding? Brilliant. Samuel says Chakados. OK, different names. Brilliant. Um, so let's look at the question again. Right. That question. Just let me come back to it. Come on. Come here. Here we go. Describe a trip you made by public transport. Come on, go up, go up, go up. Um, so where you went, how the, what the transport was. So you need to describe the transport, where you went. Sorry, you need to. You can. Um, I think you want but basically how the trip was. You want something interesting, right? I mean... If you say, well, I catch the train to work every day and last week I caught the train to work, that's OK. But if you think about it, if you're talking to a friend, would you tell your friend, I caught the train to work yesterday, like every day? Now, your friend is going to be, right, and? Why are you telling me that, right, and? So I guess when you're speaking to a friend, you, you would tell them something interesting, right? Something interesting happened on the trip. And I think the same here. Not because you have to, but because if you tell about something, if you talk about something interesting, you're going to use more vocabulary and a wider range of vocabulary, right? So you may want to think about this and think about, well, what can I talk about? Maybe, right, you want to talk about the scenery, the time you took a train or a delay, the time you took a train and it was delayed. And Oh, there's another part two question, right, about delays. You could kill two birds with one stone. You could think about ideas and language to describe the delay when you took the train or the plane. Use it for both questions. An unexpected event, an interesting conversation, right? Maybe you were on the plane, sat next to the CEO of Facebook 
and Mr. Zuckerberg was telling you all of his secrets of success. That was an interesting conversation. Who knows, right? But thinking of something interesting to talk about, I think, is a pretty good idea. Right. OK, excellent. So um, let me tell you about a trip I made on public transport. This was, um, how long ago was this? This was two years ago, actually. Um, I was on holiday with my family in New Zealand, of all places. And we uh, were in New Zealand to go sightseeing. And we decided to take a train that went from the bottom of the island to the top, the most northern top point of the island. Um, and it was, excuse me, <clears throat> It was a one-day trip, a full-day trip. Um, and so we went to the this kind of transport hub to buy our tickets. It was very state-of-the-art with these kind of automatic vending machines. It was just far easier than the system in England. So we got our tickets to take this train. What was special about this train was it was quite an old-fashioned train. Not a steam locomotive, but similar. And so the train had no windows, so you could actually stick your hand out and the wind would be blowing in. It felt very oldie worldy. And of course, the great benefit of being on this train was the amazing scenery we saw. So we would travel across for about a whole day through the whole island and every three or four hours, the scenery changed. I mean, we went from the most impressive kind of landscapes. There were mountains, snow-capped mountains in the south. And then a few hours later, we would pass through these beautiful plains with yellows and greens from the grass and the cereals and the trees. And that would lead into the forest. And we were surrounded by these magnificent red oak trees and pine trees you could almost smell it because there were no windows. You could smell the different um, fragrances as we passed through the country, through different landscapes. It was a great trip. Um, my family and I enjoyed it immensely. Uh, we captured the moment, taking lots of snapshots here and there. Um, and I really enjoyed it because also on the train, you can walk up and down. We had a few snacks at the same time. And it was a very enjoyable way to travel to our destination. And so that was a trip I took by public transport. Hooray! There you go. Interesting, right? True story as well. You may have to make up a story, but that one was true. Great. Now then, let me have a drink and I'll come back to you. Mm. Brilliant. <clears throat> oh, you're coming up with some interesting ideas. Great. Let's share some of your ideas because I think these are good. <clears throat> Till, kill two birds with one stone. Well, let me, okay, let me give you just share a bit of the um, vocabulary, if I can remember it, as I was talking so we had, I took a trip. That's fairly simple, right? Let me make this bigger for you. Impressive landscapes. I was using some of the same language, right, as before. The automatic vending machines. I mean, that's the thing, right? Once you, coming back, once you learn a new phrase or vocabulary, just start using it, right? I mean, even I'm doing that. I'm just recycling stuff that I've been practicing and using, partly as a teacher, so that you hear it again and again. And so that repetition is going to help you learn it. So I do tend to repeat a lot of the um, idioms, but the repetition is so important. And when you're practicing, do the same, right? Just if you've just learned over the moon, oh, I took this train trip through New Zealand. I was over the moon to see these beautiful, impressive landscapes, urban and rural landscapes. <laughs> That's the secret. Just keep doing it. 
right? There you go. So you can have urban and rural, urban or rural landscapes. It was all uh, it was all rural actually. And uh, we we went through um, fields dotted with yellows and what colours did I see? Greens, right? That was from the 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 grass and the trees. Okay, what else did I say? Other things. Um, it, we took snapshots to capture the moment, to carter the moment. No, to capture the moment. What else did we do? We had snacks. I'm going to ask you guys, can you remember what I said? To kill two birds with one stone. To kill two birds with one stone, do two things at the same time. What else did I say? Hmm. Anything else? I'm just checking if anyone remembers what else I said. Cobbled streets, lovely story. Great. Right, I can't remember what else I said. Um, train. I'll have to go back. Go back and listen. More interestingly, let's have a look at what you guys have said as well. Okay, bear with me. So some of your ideas. <clears throat> uh, oh, hang on. Before I do that, there's a good question here. KK, we are very poor. We cannot make that kind of story. Examiner will catch a lie if we make this type of story. Um, KK, you can lie. You can lie. The, cat, the examiner will not catch you lying he will hear and listen and he may or she may know you're lying but that's fine you can make up stories absolutely it's a language test not a lying test so don't worry <laughs> okay here we go so some ideas um Chit-chatting on the way with my friends. We rode on the bus. There was no seat for us, so we stood up all the way. A few minutes later, a girl puked. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. But good. No. Great. So rode on the way. There was no seat for us. Oh, and then the story con continues. <laughs> Your story continues over here. Driving recklessly, stopped, and the conductor picked some dust to cover the puke. The puke is the sick, right? If they're sick. Oh. Right. Here we go. Niraj says, I remember taking a train to the Blue Mountains. The whole travel felt as if the bus were making it way through heaven. Right. Um, good. Notice the difference, right? Travel is a, uh, a verb to travel can i come back in i can can i go up here yes i can so travel is a verb um but trip is the noun great great example um what else did we have oh snow cap oh now you've got it snow capped mountains thank you i did talk about snow capped mountains thank you with a p e d snow capped mountains excellent I did talk about walk up and down the train. Good. Walk up and down the train. Lovely. Very simple, but really powerful language, right? Great. Automatic vending machine I talked about. Excellent. So here we've got Hassam telling us about a trip. Um, I will have to disappear here. It says the last terrific, the last terrific trip that I took in the desert in the west side of Iraq we used a camel to travel in the desert. It is real, a significant experience, and we learn how to drive the camel for the first time. Now, um, 
that I took in the West Side. We used a camel. We used a camel. That's great. My only question, Hassan, is, is that public transport? Is it public transport? Is it used? Maybe it is in Iraq. Maybe it is used regularly as a form of transport like a taxi. Maybe it is. Um, I would, if it is, I would just make that clear to the examiner, right? Otherwise, he might think, oh, yeah, you're talking about a wild animal. You're using that story for this answer. Just make it clear and say, um, you know, a popular type of public transport in my country, in some areas, through the desert, is camel. A lot of people go by camel. And one time I took a terrific trip, da, 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 right? Just make it clear you're addressing this question. Brilliant. Anything else? Fragrance, thank you very much. I did talk about the fragrance, the fragrances and the smells. Hmm. Yeah. Picturesque is nice. Um, picturesque place. Because, ah, uh, yeah. Brilliant. Anything else? Max, Max Nick, <laughs> have I ever thought about doing a channel related to IELTS? I saw your, your post about 20 times. Um, no, I'm just doing speaking at the moment. Just speaking at the moment. Um, okay, anything else coming up here? I think not. I think we're just about done. Okay, a few other ideas coming up. Swati says, I took a double-decker bus. That's the double layer, two story bus. First time in London, really enjoyed it. Wishing for the second bite of the cherry. Very nice, very good. Um, yep, yeah, good. Here's another one, a nice example. A trip I took two years ago with a friend of mine. Um, we decided to go on a trip, to go on a trip, nice, to go on a trip to the island with a different means of transport from the usual. Great. Jumping from one bus to another, jumping off, jumping off one bus to another. Brilliant. Jumping off. Excellent. Very nice. And Zanonso, very nice. I like it. Yes. Okay. Brilliant. Lots of good ideas there and lots more coming through. Um, wow. Here's an interesting one. The train we took passed through the scenic beauty and valleys. However, the train got derailed where it comes off the track and we got delayed for five hours. We made new friends while traveling. Great. Good. Excellent. Some really nice ideas. So, Sal, thank you very much. Great. Brilliant idea. So, guys, we've looked at two different part two questions. Um, we've looked at quite a bit of vocabulary and hopefully got some nice ideas about public places, public transport. Um, excellent. Thank you very, very much. Um, so next week, I think we're going to do a similar thing to this week. On Tuesday, I'll look at a skill, right? Like this week, we looked at fluency. So I might do another skill like maybe listening or something else. Hang on. I'll do something. People coming in the room. We're not finished yet. <laughs> We'll do another skill, like for one um, one class on Tuesday. And then Thursday, I'll come back to the questions and we'll look at either part two or part one questions. Excellent. Just to remind you, if you are interested, um, download the notes from today. You can get that on my website, as always. Um, for those of you who are new, um, let me just show you very briefly so you know where to download um, these notes. They are here. Not here, but here. <laughs> if you go to um, IELTSSpeakingSuccess.com and then go to Live Lessons, you will be able to find them. They're all down here, right? Go through, make a donation if you want. And you can get down <coughs> the downloads here. You can watch them again. Okay, that's it. That's where you can find everything. Um, now, where am I? Come back. Ah, here I am. 
Great. That's it. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining me today. I hope you have a fantastic um, end of week and weekend. Whatever you're doing, whether it's drinking tea, um, watching a film, listening to a podcast, or just enjoying time with the family. Really do have a good time. Um, I've really enjoyed today's class. Get ready next week. We've got lots of interesting stuff and more riddles. <laughs> Let's see if I can catch you out, except Fatima, catch you out again. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. See you soon. Bye-bye now.